Hey everyone, it's Dora from FlippingHousesAndPancakes.com and today we're going to do another episode of Let's Cook Three Easy Shabbos Dishes, but this time with a little twist. Today we're doubling our dishes so we have food in the freezer for Yantif. As you know, Yantif is coming, Rosh Hashanah, Yom Kippur, well, we eat before and after Yom Kippur, we don't eat on Yom Kippur, and Sukkot, so many meals, we have so many meals, and to be honest, there's so much to do in between all of those days that it's just impossible to do all the cooking then, at least for me it is. So I'm going to start prepping my freezer and making sure I have extra meals in it by cooking double now. So for Shabbos, I'm making some food that will come out beautifully in the freezer. I'm going to make it. We're going to have some for Shabbos now, and we're going to have some much later down the line for Rosh Hashanah, or Erev Yom Kippur, or Sukkot. So the first dish I'm going to make is a Ceylon and pomegranate chicken, and I think this is a perfect dish to make with Rosh Hashanah in mind. We'll eat it for Shabbos this week, but we can save it and eat it on Rosh Hashanah. It's got that pomegranate, which is um, which is one of the Shiva Minim, one of the seven fruits from Israel. And it's also got Ceylon, which is date syrup, which is another one of them. So they are the perfect ingredients to add to a Rosh Hashanah chicken dish. So it's really easy. It's not complicated at all. I'm gonna start by cutting up some sweet potatoes. Now, obviously I've actually already started. And if you can tell, I've already cleaned my chicken. Um, you can definitely make this dish with the skin on if you like to serve um, chicken with the skin on. I happen to like serving chicken without skin. My kids prefer it without skin. Um, so I clean the chicken ahead of time just so that I know that I don't have to worry about it later and I don't pull off that skin and all the flavor goes with it, which is sometimes what happens when I make chicken with the skin on and then I take the skin away. Um, also did get some lovely help from several people in my house today because I've got a lot of potatoes for this video and I fortunately didn't have to peel any of them. So thank you to everybody in my house who just peeled all the potatoes for me. I appreciate it. And sweet potatoes, of course. I have the sweet potatoes here. It's a super easy. It's literally got chicken and four more ingredients. Like that's it. You don't have to do much. I'm just gonna cut them up. Now, I'm doubling the chicken and everything. Um, I'm not doubling the vegetables because I don't have that many people who will eat that much sweet potato. I'll eat it, I love it, I think it's great. But um, I don't have that many people who are gonna eat it. So I don't need to double that. I'm just gonna double the chicken in this case. So I'll have one meal of chicken to serve Shabbos and one meal of chicken to serve on Rosh Hashanah. All right, I'm gonna put my gloves on. I have a big sheet pan. You can't see it right now. But as soon as I put the sweet potatoes on, you'll be able to see it because I'll move things around. But um, I'm gonna put my gloves on. I don't like getting chicken under my nails. So anytime I'm dealing with raw chicken, I'm going to put gloves on. Also then, I don't have to worry about the germs as much either because of course I didn't touch the raw chicken. So this chicken, like I said, has been skinned. This chicken has been washed and it's been just sitting here waiting for me to throw it on a sheet pan. So I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna lay it all out so that we've got all the chicken on there. And this is enough for two meals in our house. Um, depending on how many people you have this recipe, uh, if you double it, it could make maybe four meals for you. But we have a decent amount of people, so this is going to make only, let's see, almost done. This should all fit because I used this sheet pan the other day and I definitely got this much chicken on it. There we go. So I'm going to take that bowl, throw it away. Not throw it away. I'll put it in my sink. Throw it away. Just throw it away. Okay. Can you see it now? We've got a pan of chicken. This is really easy. I'm going to take my sweet potatoes 
and I'm going to spread it out. If you like sweet potatoes and they're going to get gobbled up in your house, put more. If you don't like sweet potatoes, you can skip it and just do the chicken, but it's really good with the sweet potatoes. So um, at least try one. Just put one sweet potato if you're not a big fan and see if you like them cooked this way. They're really, really tasty. All right. Now I do have one more piece. I do have fans of chestnuts. So I'm going to add my roasted chestnuts. They came in a bag. I literally just have to open the bag. Nothing complicated here. I'm going to pour that also over. I'm going to pour that over. You can use just one, but I, like I said, I have fans. So I'm putting all of that in. So, so far we have chicken, sweet potatoes, and roasted chestnuts. Now we're going to do the Ceylon and the pomegranate juice. Well, not pomegranate juice, pomegranate syrup. All right, so I've got my pomegranate syrup. I'm going to use half a cup of pomegranate syrup. I'm going to pour that into my bowl. Mm. So good. It smells so good. This is a sweet chicken. This is not a savory chicken, but again, it's going to be Rosh Hashanah. So it's perfect time to have a sweet chicken. I'm going just about a half cup on this Ceylon. It is going to be amazing. Oh yeah. All right. That date syrup. Woo! Okay. And I'm just going to mix them together. The pomegranate is a little sour, a little tart, and the date syrup is dripping everywhere. I'll clean that up later. <laughs> okay. Um, and it, the date syrup gives it that sweet flavor combined with the chestnuts and the sweet potatoes and the chicken. Oh, it is so good. And it is a perfect Russian chocolate chicken dish. And it takes almost no time, which is the best. Almost no prep time. My hot water heater for my like tea and coffee and everything just turned on. So <laughs> that's what you're hearing. Ah, you can't keep those noises out of the kitchen, right? I'm literally just drizzling this sauce that's just the pomegranate syrup and the Ceylon over my chicken, over my sweet potatoes. We're gonna drizzle it all over. Remember, this is a huge sheet pan. You do not need to use this much if you are not making this much chicken. You can have this. So you can do just two tablespoons of pomegranate um, syrup and a quarter cup of Ceylon. But this is gonna be amazing. Let me just show you what this looks like right now. Look at that. Oh my goodness. This is going to be awesome. It smells so good already. It's going to be delicious when it comes out. So we're going to pop this in the oven and we're going to come back and make my second dish. Okay. Uh, we are going to make potato purple. <laughs> okay. You don't understand. Have you guys ever had one of those moments where you're like, yeah, I have all the ingredients I need. It's fine. I'm going to make it. And you're all set up and you've got everything prepped. Like you can't just leave it for like the next day. And then you realize you, you already finished one of your ingredients. So I'm making my overnight potato cobble. It's actually my sister in law Malky's recipe. Um, making it with a red onion. I don't know how this will come out, but we're going to find out. I'm sure it'll be awesome. It's an onion, it'll be great. Usually I make it with a yellow onion. Today it's gonna be made with a red onion cause, uh oh, <laughs> I ran out of yellow onions. I used one for dinner. <sighs> All right, this is my sister-in-law Malky's recipe. It's an overnight potato kugel. You can bake it and leave it in the oven overnight on really low for Shabbos morning. Um, I'm gonna be honest, I just bake it and then, and then mostly we just eat it. I don't usually leave it overnight, but you can, but you can. Um, it's delicious either way. And you can find this recipe in my cookbook, Flipping Houses and Pancakes, Kosher Recipes and Kitchen Design Tips for <laughs> from an amateur professional. That's me. All right, we're gonna, <laughs> we're gonna make this fiddle with a red onion. It's gonna be fine. Uh, one minute. I also realized I don't have a tablespoon. You know what? I'm gonna do it by hand. It's gonna be fine. Okay, so. The first thing we're going to do is actually make my mixture of all the liquids except for the potatoes and the onions. All right, so I have my six eggs in here already and I can kind of mix them up. All right, we're going to add everything into here and then we'll shred the potatoes and onions. So I'm going to put a little bit of pepper. 
I don't like it too peppery. If you like it too peppery, then go for it, okay? The pepper is to taste. I need about a teaspoon and a half, tablespoon and a half of salt. Yeah, yeah that's totally it, right? It's gonna be an interesting cuddle. It's a good thing we'll have two of them, one for this Shabbos and one for Yantif. All right. <laughs> ah! Okay. Secret ingredient. Also, it's not so secret. It's seltzer. Actually, I'm gonna put the oil in first because the seltzer tends to make a big mess. So I'm gonna put some oil in. I'm gonna put two thirds of a cup of oil. We are gonna also put some oil in the baking pans. We'll do that when we're ready. And that's just a little bit. But we're gonna put two thirds of a cup of oil straight into my pan, into my bowl, into my bowl. Okay, hopefully nobody shook this before for my video. Oh, that was really close. We made it. We survived that. Okay. I'm using plain seltzer. I'll be honest. I've used flavored seltzers too. And it does just fine. We're going to put a cup and a half of this seltzer. But really, like, I've used flavored seltzers with no trouble. I did tell my sister-in-law that I did that, and she was a little bit horrified. Um, it's her recipe and all. But I'm like, hey, sometimes you have to change it because you will discover you only have lemon lime seltzer. Anyhow, I'm going to mix this all up together. We've got this nice bowl full. You can see that from there, right? And the reason that I make this part first is because I don't want my potatoes to start to brown. Nobody wants that brown, icky look. Not the beautiful golden look, but the brown, icky look of a potato kugel that, like, the potatoes sat out too long. So <laughs> I mix it all up. As soon as they're shredded, they go right into my mixture. I coat them, and then nothing turns brown perfect. Do it every time. All right, next we're going to start food processing. I just stepped away. I shut off my camera and stepped away from the food so I could have a little bit of a sneeze. I'm back. All right, we're going to, we're going to start food processing. I, it's fine. I'm going to get that in a minute. We're going to put some onion into, into my food processor along with some of the potato. Now this recipe calls for about 10 potatoes. So this is not a small recipe, which is going to make me two of these pans. One is going to get frozen. One is going to get used for Shabbos, um, which is, like I said, perfect. And potato cocoa freezes so nicely. I know people are always afraid of freezing potatoes. Potato cocoa freezes beautifully. Um, and when you reheat it, just remember, crack open the, the lid. You know, if you have a foil on the top of your pan when you're reheating it, just crack it open a little bit so that some of that steam can go away and you can still have that nice crispy outside. Okay, so we're gonna food process this. All right, I have my S plate in my food processor. I'm gonna turn it on. The onion, when I process the onion with the potato, it also helps keep the potato from turning brown. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness, you guys. Well, well, yeah, yeah, uh-huh. We're gonna have, <clears throat> can you see the color? Can you see the color? We're gonna have purple potato kugel because of the red onion. Okay, well, but it's not brown. So I think that's fine. I'm gonna pour this into my bowl. Okay, I'm gonna put that in my bowl. I'm gonna make sure it's coated I wonder what color it's gonna be after it's coated in all the eggs. All right, it's gonna be awesome. It might be a little weird. It'll be it'll be delicious. That's that's the important part. It'll be delicious. I'm going to pick up the piece of onion and wash it off, and then finish processing all of my onions and potatoes, and then and then I'll come back and I'll show you the next step to making this very interesting potato kugel. Okay, I've got all of my potato and onion mixture in my bowl, and I'm starting to think I might even fill three of these. I usually make a 9 by 13 and then another smaller one for either giving away or sometimes uh, it just gets eaten before Shabbos. I'm going to spray my two pans, and I'm going to pour just a little bit of oil into the bottom of each of them, and I'm going to pop it in my oven just for like 30 seconds. For some reason, it really makes a huge difference having that nice hot oil in the bottom of the pan. So they've been in there for like literally 
30 seconds. We're gonna take them out. That oil will be hot, sloshing around, hopefully. And, oh yeah, it's a nice sloshy oil. We're gonna take that out, we don't want it to burn. We'll take the oil out, and we are going to put our purple into these pans. We're gonna put them in the oven. We're gonna cook it at 400 degrees until they look nice and golden. Now if you're cooking it overnight, then you're gonna turn your temperature down. Um, you can find the recipe in my cookbook, but I'm just gonna take them out. We're gonna eat one for Shabbos and the other one's gonna cool down and get frozen. So I'm gonna fill these, put them in the oven, and we'll be right back. Ooh, it is getting late. I don't know if you can tell, it's getting dark outside, so I better finish up my cooking now for tonight and then I'll do more tomorrow. But in the meantime, I already sliced five peaches. I'm going to be making a peach kuchen, which is a type of cake. I uh, usually make it a plum kuchen, but you know what? I had a bunch of peaches, it's peach season. So I've peeled and sliced five peaches and laid them in the bottom of a sprayed baking pan, making two cakes, one for Shabbos, one to freeze, <laughs> same as I have with everything else today and we're gonna get started. So I've got the sliced peaches, it was five peaches. I sliced them up, they were not huge peaches, these were smaller peaches. So I think plums, like they're a little bit bigger than plums, but you don't want those giant, you don't wanna use five giant peaches because um, that's gonna just overwhelm your cake. So if you have the giant peaches, do like three of them. You don't need all five, okay? And we're going to make the batter. Okay, I got three eggs in here and we're gonna start adding the other ingredients. So we will add a cup of white sugar, granulated sugar. Add, my oven is ready. Let me come up to the right temperature. Got a cup of white sugar. I'm gonna put two thirds of a cup of oil. Again, I'm using avocado oil today, but you can use canola oil or vegetable oil. You probably don't want to use olive oil because it has a lot of flavor, but I'm not gonna stop you if you really want it. Okay. And we need two thirds of a cup of almond milk. You could use soy milk if you want. You can use any kind of milk replacement. Um, could use water, but it won't have quite the depth of flavor as if you used soy milk or almond milk. Happen to have some power of almond milk with me today. So that's what I'm using. There we go. And I'm going to add some vanilla. I need about a teaspoon of vanilla. To be honest, I don't usually measure that. Okay, so we have the eggs, the sugar, the oil, the vanilla, the almond milk. I'm gonna mix those together before we add our other ingredients. And I just didn't feel like schlepping my mixer over from the corner, so I'm doing this one by hand today. All right, cream my sugar with my eggs and my oil, and then oh, I can smell the vanilla. That's so nice. All right, we're gonna add the other ingredients, which is only two more ingredients. We have, I need about one and a half teaspoons of baking powder. And we need one, oh, did you see that poof of flour? Okay, we need one and a third cups of flour. So I already have a dirtied half cup measuring cup, so I'm just gonna use that one. By dirtied, I mean I used it for the brown sugar which comes up in just a minute, and about a third. There we go. So that is my batter. We're gonna mix this together. Turn it into a cake batter. Uh, I set my oven at 350. Uh, this is a different oven. I have a parm oven, so this is gonna go in my parm oven. My chicken and my potato kugel are 400 degrees up in my top oven, my Kalashik oven. So we're gonna get this cake batter all mixed up. And yes, you could do this in a mixer, you could do it with, but, um, with a hand mixer, or you could do it the old fashioned way with a big giant spoon, which is what I'm doing today. Although I feel like I should have used a whisk. What do you think? All right, let me get this batter all mixed up. It's a little lumpy. It's not pancakes. So we do want to get the lumps mostly out of this. It's going to be like a cake batter. All right, now, I'm gonna move all this stuff over, push everything out of the way. Uh, remember, I did spray these before I put the peaches in. I'm gonna pour half of the batter over one 
and half a batter over the other. Make sure they get all evened out. Now, once you're doing this, if you want to cut up extra peaches, you could even double this and make four of these cakes. Four peach kuchens at once. They freeze beautifully. They taste good. Great with coffee or tea on um, Yantif you're sitting, or Shabbos, when you're sitting there relaxing with your family, or when you're hiding in your room. Check up when you're doing, it's fine. All right, now, the other thing that we have here is I took half a cup of brown sugar, mixed it with a teaspoon of cinnamon, and we're gonna sprinkle half over one cake and the other half over the other cake. It's gonna be delicious. You know what's interesting? I um, finished one bag of brown sugar and I got out my second bag, and they were both light brown sugar, because I almost always use light brown. I don't know, I'm just not a big fan of the dark brown sugar. Anyhow, I almost always use light brown sugar in my cooking. It's a little less intense, I guess. And um, just sprinkle this over the top and kind of smooth it out so everything's got a little bit of that. That will be delicious. Just want a little pump right here, one second. There we go. And when, when I put, when I got the second bag of brown sugar out, it was a different brand and it was actually much lighter brown sugar than the light brown sugar from the other brand. So that was very interesting. Not all brands are equal, it seems. All right, these are ready. We're gonna put them in the oven. We're gonna let them bake until they puff up, are nice and golden and not jiggly. We want them nice and set. You could, should be able to press your finger down gently on the top and it springs back up. You'll know your cake is ready and I will come back and show you the finished product. All right, there's the chicken. Oh my goodness. And a potato kugel just came out now. You can let it get much more golden, but it is gonna get baked again tomorrow a little bit to warm it up. Um, and the ones that will go in the freezer will also get baked again. So they don't need to be super dark right now. And of course you could leave them in overnight. There you have it, my Ceylon and pomegranate chicken. It is a perfect dish for Rosh Hashanah and for the Shabbos too. My potato kugels, which my recipe actually made three of these round pans. So one is for Shabbos and two are for my freezer. And the peach kuchen, which are not out of the oven yet, but it is getting late and I have to get everyone ready for bed. So <laughs> I will show you the peach kuchen at the very, very end of this video. I'll show you those, that when it comes out of the oven. But one thing to remember from this video is if you don't have the right ingredient it's okay to substitute this potato kugel smells great looks great i haven't tasted it yet but i did use a substitute ingredient in this recipe and of course also in my peach kuchen because it's originally a plum kuchen so don't be afraid to you know mix it up a little bit or substitute something in emergency if you're not sure, is it okay to substitute one ingredient for another, call a friend who's really good at cooking or baking and ask them. But if you enjoyed this video and enjoyed cooking for Shabbos with me and prepping your food for Yantif, then please like, subscribe, hit the bell for notifications so you find out every time I upload a new video. And of course, check out my website, flippinghousesandpancakes.com. Oh yeah, and don't forget, this potato kugel is in my cookbook. And you can find that on my website too, flippinghousesandpancakes.com. All right, my peach kuchens have come out of the oven. They look amazing. Um, I'm a little afraid to do this, but I'm going to scoop it out and I'm going to put it back just so you can see. Oh, look at the peach underneath. Isn't that gorgeous? This is going to be so delicious. All right, that's what the peach kuchen looks like.